let's now talk about how to work up a case of insomnia disorder. When you review the DSM-5 chapter on sleep-wake disorders, you'll see the diagnostic criteria for insomnia disorder that specify that the patient's complaint of difficulty falling or staying in sleep typically occur three times a week or longer, have lasted three months or longer, and are associated with daytime distress and impairment. At the core of what we're doing is the vicious cycle displayed here, sleep difficulties leading to frustration, to more arousal, to further sleep difficulty. And ultimately, by means of our workup and intervention, we want to substitute a virtuous cycle for the vicious cycle depicted here. As part of the workup, consider possible causes of insomnia disorder in adults be mindful that the differential diagnosis includes circadian rhythm changes, whether delayed or advanced sleep phase syndromes, primary sleep disorders, and of particular importance, co-occurring medical and psychiatric illness, prescribed and over-the-counter medications, and self-treatment with things like alcohol and caffeine. And older adults also consider the possibility of a neurodegenerative disorder. Part of the history and evaluation also includes a review of sleep hygiene practices. Does the patient engage in practices that promote sleep or destroy sleep? We'll talk more about that later in the context of brief behavioral treatment for insomnia. Consider as part of the differential diagnosis such primary sleep disorders as obstructive sleep apnea, for example, what we saw in Chip's case in the earlier tape and other issues like restless leg syndrome, periodic limb movement disorders, and REM sleep behavioral disorders. All of these are described with their diagnostic criteria in the DSM-5 chapter on sleep-wake disorders. An important part of the evaluation also addresses psychiatric and medical comorbidities, for example, pain related to neuropathy or arthritis, congestive heart failure, COPD, and other issues like this in older adults, central nervous system disorders like dementia or Parkinson's also come to mind. Consider also the medications being ingested by the patient, and in particular, at what time of day they are being taken. If uh, medication is arousing, for example, it may be better if it's prescribed for ingestion earlier in the day rather than later in the day. It's important to have a good handle on all of the medications that a patient is using. We've dealt with uh, issues like this at greater length in a chapter by Carl de Gramsci and I published in Charlie Nemiroff's volume, and I recommend that to you. It's captioned here. A useful part of the workup of insomnia disorder is to pay attention to the specific insomnia symptoms, such as difficulty falling asleep, difficulty maintaining sleep, early morning awakening, and non-restorative sleep. Specific insomnia symptoms do aid in differential diagnosis, and particularly so in the context of the patient's age. So, for example, trouble falling asleep may signal a circadian rhythm sleep disorder, such as a delayed sleep phase syndrome in a younger patient. Early morning awakening, by contrast, especially in an older patient, could signal another type of circadian rhythm sleep disorder, namely advanced sleep phase syndrome or possibly clinical depression. Difficulty maintaining sleep may result from pain or from a breathing-related sleep disorder, as we saw in the case of CHIP. And these are the key points to take home. It's important, in other words, to place insomnia symptoms within both a 24-hour or circadian context of sleep-wake rhythms, as well as within the context of the particular patient's medical and psychiatric history. I would emphasize that, like pain, symptoms of insomnia are often determined by many things, Understanding these factors helps to arrive at a specific treatment plan for shared decision-making with the patient and with their caregiver.